Hey everybody, how we doing today? Welcome to Tarpon Season 2019. Uh, every year I always like to put together a kind of a uh, tarpon rod and reel arsenal video. I generally get a lot of questions about what systems I'm using after I do these uh, few tarpon videos. So this way I'll have a link I could just give them that I'll show this video here. Um, actually the prior years have been pretty much fairly consistent. I have been using the same rod combos which was a... Uh, a uh, pen conflict match with a Shimano Terramar as my primary setups across the board. Uh, this year I'm transitioning to the uh, Esky rods, um, which are quite a bit different. There are a 100% carbon rod, um, different than like a standard graphite rod where it's a hollow tube. These are 100% through and through carbon. Uh, definitely quite a bit different. Um, actions are different. They're sort of like a parabolic slow parabolic style rod um, they also have extra backbone to them once it loads up and uh, on the real side I'm going from the uh, pen conflicts to the quantum cabos um, these are definitely a better build they're a little smoother operations definitely quite a bit more drag probably twice the amount of drag capabilities than the conflicts uh, definitely a heavier build uh, but also heavier in general as well than those light uh, pen conflicts. So uh, I'll be testing those out this year as well as a couple other rigs. But uh, otherwise, check out my tarpon rod and reel arsenal. All right, let's talk about rods and reels, the meat and potatoes. Starting off with the most important one I've got is this one. This is a Shimano Stimula. It's a $20 Kmart rod, basically. Um, actually, I find these at the side of the road, at boat dock, boat launches. Uh, people just get cheap ones to use. They try it, use it, break them, and just throw them into the mangroves. And I find them, I clean them up, fix them up, and I use them for my bait catching rods. So this I use to catch uh, pinfish and grunts. I've got it paired up with one of my last year's versions, which is the uh, Pen Conflict uh, 4000, and that's my, my bait rod. Um, hugely important. If I need to go out and catch a tarpon for a video, um, I'm going to go with live bait, and I'm going to be catching it with this. And if I got this, I know I'm going to catch bait, which means I know I'm going to catch a tarpon. Next, old tried and true is my favorite rod here is this is the uh, old noodle rod, I always call it. Uh, this is a Shimano TDR. Uh, it's a $30 rod that you can get, or two for 60. Uh, basically, it's a freshwater downrigger trolling rod for walleyes or stripers. Um, basically, it's for down rod, downrigger systems where you run the weighted ball, your line goes down with it. The rod is bent over preloaded when you get a bite the hook com the line comes off the clip and then the you need a long rod with a lot of flexibility to take up that slack and set the hook and that's what the the rod is built for but i use it for tarpon and i use it for vertical jigging and i use it for trolling out in the blue water because it's a great rod and it's thirty dollars but uh I really love this rod for the tarpon because it's eight and a half foot tall, okay? So a lot of times I'll be bobber fishing with a pinfish and I'll have a long leader depending on where I'm fishing. And with the eight and a half foot rod, it allows me to still cast that thing a mile and that makes it a lot easier, especially when I'm anchored up or on the side of a, a channel and I need to cast out into the middle of the channel and let the bait drift. Also, it's great for that initial hookup because of the so much flexibility. Um, it's a parabolic rod, so it's got that full blend throughout the whole thing. And uh, that first 30 seconds when that tarpon grabs the bait, it's jumping, it's freaking out. 
okay? I don't have to be so precise because that eight and a half foot flexibility absorbs that jumping and all absorbs all that run and so forth. So my, my drag might not be right. It might be too heavy or too light, whatever. That absorbs it and it allows me to get my, uh, my thumb on there and adjust that drag manually and get it to the right position. And boom, I got that hook, uh, fish hooked up. Um, negatives are is at the end of the fight when I need to break that tarpon spirit because it doesn't have a ton of backbone for that uh, killing power. Um, it makes it harder to land those tarpon and to really bust their spirit. Also because the length trying to grab that leader when it's an eight and a half foot rod is very difficult, especially on a kayak or with one person. Um, because I'm having such problems with sharks lately, uh, this year I think is going to be bad with sharks. I'm kind of retiring this rod. I'll bring it out every once in a while, but I'm going to be transitioning to this one. And this is basically the six foot six, uh, heavy, extra heavy, uh, esky rod. Um, these are the custom build 100% carbon, full carbon rods. Um, parabolic action is primarily my vertical jigging and bottom rod. But because of the shark situation, I'm going to give up on the flexibility of casting and the initial fight uh, for the ability to really put the weight, put the stick to the tarpon, break their spirit, get them unhooked, and get them relief before they get uh, eaten. Um, so I'll be utilizing this a lot more. Um, pairing both of these rods, I use uh, Torium 16 conventional reels. Um, this one has 65 pound braid because it's my, uh, vertical jigging rod. The other one I think is 40 pounds. Um, it came used with that line. So I just never changed it. Um, with tarpon fishing, I generally don't put a lot of, well, normally not shark week 2019, but I don't use a lot of drag. So it's not the utmost importance, the, the line, the braided part of it. Um, but you, I still run like the 60 pound, 40, 60 or 80 pound leader because of the chafing. Next up on the priority list is this one. Uh, this is the Esky seven foot heavy. Um, this replaces my Shimano Terramar seven. That's been my old reliable, um, spinning version Cabo 60, uh, versus my pen conflict 6,000. So they're about equivalent. This one has a ton more drag. It's a lot smoother, okay? It's a lot heavier build. It's a lot heavier reel as well, uh, but it's definitely a, a lot more uh, oomph to it. Um, the uh, seven foot with that uh, heavy makes it so I can cast those uh, nine inch paddle tails with ease and uh, really put the stick to those tarpon when I need to set the hook. So very well balanced there for to tossing uh, uh, big soft plastics but I also use it for uh, live baiting as well. Um, I actually have better hookups with spinning reel over conventionals uh, because with the drag, I could turn the drag to nothing on this, where my conventionals, I use a clicker and that clicker, even though it's supposed to be a light drag, still has enough where I think um, they could feel it. That little bit of tension from that line popping and hitting their side of their face that freaks them out where the spinning rod, I could basically turn it into just nothing and they don't feel it. So still use it for live baiting. Um, this is the Esky seven foot. Um, it is the 1520 pound rated. It's considered a medium heavy. I've got it with the uh, Cabo 50. So a little bit upgraded from my usual 4000s to the 50, a little bit uh, more line capacity. Um, still a lot of drag built in these Cabos, um, medium heavy, uh, to, to just have the ability to set the hook and land a, a tarpon if I need be. The specific reason for this one, instead of the, uh, seven foot heavy is being able to cast soft plastic, uh, medium weight baits. And, uh, I'm not going to show you that yet, but I've got a whole new line of baits coming out and uh, lures coming out that are gonna be tailored really well for that setup, that uh, medium heavy, uh, even mediums, and uh, for catching those big tarpons. Then finally, goes to the fly whipping. Um, this is the 
same rod that I use every year. Um, this is just a, uh, what is this? What do they call this thing? Worldwide Sportsman. It's basically the Bass Pro Shops 12 weight. Um, it came with a 10 weight um, reel on it as a combo. I bought it off of eBay for like 150 bucks. And uh, I use that for the last three or four years. I catch my three tarpon on the fly every year and then I'm pretty much done with it. This year I want to do more fly fishing. So I kept the, the rod. I haven't upgraded that yet because I don't, I don't know what a thousand dollar rod really does versus a hundred dollar rod, especially when you're throwing a heavy fly and heavy weighted line and fighting a big fish. But uh, I did upgrade to this uh, Reddington behemoth. Um, that is a 12 weight and uh, the, the key to this one, it's a uh, economical. I bought it off of eBay for $85. I think they go for new for like 130. Uh, it probably has the, the strongest drag on the market of all the reels out there. Um, but it's just not waterproof. Not, it's just, it's got an open, uh, uh, drag system. So it's not that waterproof that you're paying the four to $500 for, but I'm fine with that. I, I could rebuild reels, especially fire reels. No problem. And that is my fly system there. I also do have a 10 weight that I can throw, but um, until I get used to the 12 weight with the bigger flies, uh, I'll leave that one for the permit and kudas and so forth. So that kind of rounds it up. All right, so that's my personal tarpon arsenal, but uh, what's actually the requirements for tarpon fishing? I can give you a ball target, ballpark if I had just one rod and reel set up. It would be a seven foot heavy spinning 6,000 with 40 pound braid with a 60 pound leader and then whatever hook on the end of it. That would be a meat and potato style setup. What's actual probably necessary, this is the way to think about it. If you are fishing stationary, meaning you're on a bridge or you're on land or even if you're on a boat, but you're anchored, but you can't come off anchor, say like you're in a center console of fishing a channel surrounded by flats. So you know that you got to stay in the channel. So you might as well just stay on anchor. Then you need to have large capacity of line because you're not going to start that tarpon until it gets way out there and you want more drag to be able to tire it out. So it doesn't spool you. Okay. But to be honest with you, majority of the tarpon fishing is basically you get hooked up few jumps get out of the way then the first thing you do is you pop the anchor fire up the motor get your pedals going paddle whatever and you start following that fish once you're following that fish then it's just a matter of that fish is going to be towing you around and wearing itself out and that's the whole meat and potatoes of the fight then where it comes in play at the end i kind of talked about is you can you can use a trout rod for the first 90% of the fight, but if you're looking to land that fish and put your hands on it, that's where it does require to have a backbone. So that's where the medium heavy, heavy, extra heavy rods to, to clean up, to finish that fight, to break their spirit is where it'll come in handy to pull them off the bottom and bring them up. And you will need it for that. But if you're not interested in that grunt part of that last 5% of the fight, a trout rod, just enough to keep pressure so the hook doesn't fall out is all you need. Uh, same thing with drag. Um, you really don't need a lot of drag. That is using circle hooks or basically palm grab, set your hook, get that hook buried. And then after that, you kind of want light drags to get through the jumps. And from there, it's just a matter of keeping pressure until it's tired. Um, you're not gonna you beat a tarpon in five minutes. It's a half an hour, 45 minute fight. So you're gonna take your time and just let that thing wear itself out. Um, that also relates to your main line doesn't require hundred pound uh, braided line. I use between uh, 40 and 60 main line because I use it for other uses and I want it to last for a couple seasons, but I would be fine with 20 pound uh, based on the fact, like I said, is you're never putting 20 pounds on the pressure on that fish pretty much ever. So that part isn't important online. What is important is that last two feet to your hook because that's where it's going to get abrasion from the fish's mouth, the side of the face, the body rubbing and rubbing for a half an hour, 45 minutes. That's what tends to end up breaking before anything else. 
Uh, so other than that, the rod and reels and that kind of the lines are, is you don't need a lot, okay? Your system's in place on how to fight and land and get through that first 30 seconds of it is probably more important than the, uh, the rod and reel setup. So uh, just kind of base it on the type of fishing that you're gonna be doing, um, kind of have it planned out in your mind, half an hour, 45 minutes, there's no rush. I get through the first 30 seconds and then do I need to land that fish at the end? Um, is it that important that I got to horse that fish up and break its spirit in order to get that photo or whatever? Then do I need that heavier rod? But otherwise, hopefully that gives you a kind of a hint on uh, what uh, the needs and not needs of uh, tarpon equipment. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching and uh, welcome to Tarpon Season 2019.